Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. I give them a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. Now, they're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. 40? 340. No, I'm sorry, Michael, that's very cheap. <laughs> if I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say no. Reject that offer, have a gamble, go to auction, hope to get a little bit more money there. 420. I'm going to be on hand at all times to help and advise members of the public. Today, the show comes to you from Crewe in Cheshire. There's a great crowd of people here. They brought along their goods. They are determined to do business. They want to walk away with the real deal. Plenty of locals have turned out to lock horns with our dealers. Our first seller is Jean. One, I want a passport to go away with. And two, I want some spending money while I'm away on holiday. So I will be pushing my luck with him. No messing from Jean. Look out, Hoggy. What have we got? We've got a Claris Cliff milk jug. Yep. We've got a Claris Cliff single egg cup holder. Claris Cliff gay day pattern, preserve pot, sugar bowl, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. This one's a later one. This is Wilkinson, the mark on the bottom of this. Yep. Uh, which is the gilt mark on the bottom there. Right. So it's still Claris, it's, you know, but it's mass produced. Yeah. I'll make you an offer, Jean. Is that all right? You can do, yes. We'll see where it goes. Well, I think it's going to go some way towards your passport. That's do you think sure. so? Well, thank you, my yeah. love. Thank you. My middle name is generous. Is it? 10, 20, 30, 40 quid. Mm, no. Expectations a lot higher? Yeah. Here comes my best mate. He'll help yeah. me. Did I hear the word generous? Oh, oh David. <laughs> Did I hear the word generous? He said he was generous. No, my middle name, David. Yeah, you know well, that's true. And I know who's your mate, Augie. Yeah, well, you see, <laughs> well, this is the problem, you see, because he's a mate of mine, we've gone back 20 years, you know. Well, I've got to keep saying... You don't look that old. Oh, no, excuse me, another ten already, David. She can come <laughs> on the programme any time. <laughs> OK, so... 100 to 150 is yeah. what they are saying. Yeah. I have to say to you, the 150 is perhaps being a bit optimistic. Right. We need to get up somewhere around the 100. Yeah. OK, I'm going to leave you with him. You need to just I'll twist that arm a little no, bit more. I'll be gentle with him. Right, a bit more, Michael. Uh, OK, so I'll go 60, 70, 80 to do a deal with you now. Just a bit more. No, come on, give me come a on. profit. If I have 100, 110, you can have a profit, Michael. Please. Jean, 90, final offer, I really ain't going to go any higher, love. Uh, just make it round, don't you? The round... I, I'm going to have to say, you know, he <laughs> stepped up to the plate. <laughs> Clarice Cliff is very popular, but that's not exactly the most desirable Clarice Cliff. You know how to handle him. Do that with your hand across the table and do that to I'm going to be more than my hand if he doesn't give me another tenner. Oh. Oh blimey. oh, blimey. I'm getting out of this. This could be trouble, Hoggy. <laughs> I should get another tenner in me. I'm going to have to give you a big snog if you don't give me another tenner. <laughs> you know what you are? <laughs> Gene, that is scary. <laughs> That's what we're in. It's scary. Right, serious time. 90 quid on the table. Deal. I tell you what, put me another five yeah. and I'll give you a big kiss on the cheek. How's really? that? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, I resist okay. that, can I? Oh, There's we? your fiver. Thank you. There's the, the deal. And now's my kiss. Mm. Thank you. Get in there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, it's quite an unusual deal for me, that one. I don't normally get a kiss, and I don't think I'll make a profit either, but there you go. Right, I've just got £95 off our Michael there. A great big kiss, and I think he's one gentleman. But I'm going to have a fantastic holiday with this once I've got my passport. And thank you, Dixon's Real Deal. It's a pleasure, Jean. That's one happy customer and a deal sealed with a kiss. Joe Brayshaw's first serving of the day is with Seller David. This is yours, David? Yep. It's a cruet. Yep. It's nice. Silver. How do you come to own it? It was my late mother's and father's, and it's just sort of been in their cabinet for years and years, and then it's been passed to me, and it's done the same in my house. It's just sat there. Um, right, uh, these three bits all match. They're uh, 1930 Birmingham Hallmark. Each piece is individually hallmarked. Obviously, we've got a pepper pot, 
with a nice little finial on the top, a salt and a mustard. Yep. These spoons have nothing to do with it. I don't know where they've come from. One of them, I think, is a foreign one. I think the other one is a plated. And I don't know what that one is. Nice box. A little bit tatty, but redeemable. Uh, how much is it? I don't know. I, I'm, here, I'm here to ask you that question. Right, we'll have a little punt. £50. No. Right response. £60. Getting a little bit warmer. £70. £80 and stop. And here comes David. Well, let me tell you what the independent valuers and the auctioneer say. They say around 70 to 100, perhaps as far as 120. The only problem is silver is not doing particularly well in the sale room unless it's something unusual, quirky and very high quality. But I have to say, and it's your, your treasure, but it's a fairly average suite or set. And so I'm going to say what is on the table is about the going price for that style of kit at the moment. You can't squeeze perhaps another I'm ten totally, or another five. Totally unsqueezable. That's your last squeeze, that's is it? That's my last squeeze. Listening to David, I think, yeah, we'll go for the deal, Joe. Yeah, I think that's the right thing. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thanks for bringing Ciao. it in. Ciao. It went well. I sat down with Joe and uh, we looked at the crew it and I listened to what she said and I had a bit of a value in my mind and uh, I think at the end of it we sort of met where, where I thought we would. All's well that ends well, but will our Joe squeeze out a profit? Find out later. Attention! Rob's hoping for a perfect deal from Janice Kehoe. And what have you brought for me today, Rob? An officer's tunic from about 1880, yeah. Cheshire Rifle Volunteers. Yeah. Uh, my grandfather wore it uh, doing um, uh, an act that, um, where he used to uh, raise money for charity. Oh, I see. Right. Well, it, it's a really interesting uh, piece of clothing. I've never seen anything like it. It's so beautifully made. You've got all this fine work here, all done by hand, it would have been. And again, you've got the epaulettes, and you've got the Prince of Wales uh, feathers on the top. The thing that concerns me is, I do think, looking at the bottom, that it's been cut down. At the bottom, it, it doesn't appear to be finished in the same way that the rest of it is. And I just wonder if there'd been some piping on the bottom. But it, it's a wonderful piece of social history. If I did buy it from you today, what would you do with the money? Perhaps put it towards um, a holiday uh, for uh, the wife and the daughter. Yeah, OK. I will put some money on the table and we'll see where we get to. All right, if we start uh, 20, 40, 60 pounds. Ooh, no, nowhere no. near. Right, I'll go a little bit further. I'll go to 80 pounds. Oh, here comes David. Well, just before you make a decision, Robert, let me just tell you what the independent values and the auctioneers say. They say two to three hundred pounds. I would have thought it was ambitious, the three hundred pounds, by the way, but mm. somewhere around close to two hundred might be quite realistic. I think that's a bit on the low side, so I yeah. think it's worth a gamble. What happens at auction, I don't know, but speak to the auctioneer about a, a sensible reserve, and let's see what the room says in the auction. The room talks, and then it will find its level. Thank you. OK, Robert. That's about as far as I want to go. Yeah. Um, so what would you like to do? I think I'd rather go to auction. Have you ever been to auction before? No. Oh, well, if there's two military collectors, you should do really well there. Good okay. luck. Thank you very much. Thank you Cheers. very much indeed. Thank you. It's a in really interesting piece of social history, but I think auction's the best place for it. It will find its level, and I hope he does really well there. Rob marches off to auction, and the tunic goes under the gavel of auctioneer Robert Stones. You came along with uh, a Cheshire rifle, a volunteers, 
uh, scarlet tunic from the late 19th century. Yeah. You came along, you sat down with Janice, Janice said, I will give you um, 80 pounds for that. You thought it, the offer wasn't good enough. The reserve is 200 pounds. It's coming up now, fingers crossed. Let's see if it makes its money. What may we say, Fred? 100 pounds started off at 100 pounds, now do I hear? 110 unbid on the internet. Internet's coming in at 110, interesting. 110, 120, 130 is the now. 130 is the now at 130, 130, 140, 150, now do I hear? 150 on the internet, 150, 160, 170 is the now, 170. 180, 190 is the now on the internet at 190. It's 190, will you take 190? It's very close to your reserve. At 200, you're wanting it. 200, 200 bid at 200. It's at 200 pounds now, just in time. I thought, blimey, he's going to turn down 190 quid. At 200 pounds, then, if you're all finished and done at 200. 200 pounds, woo! You had me perspiring there. I thought, blimey, he's going to turn down 190 quid. We have some commission to take off, yeah. which is 15%, and a little tiny bit of that. £164 you will be going home with. Are you happy? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. He's not easy to please, but that <laughs> is the real deal. Coming up, the arrival of something special in the dealer's den. That is one of the most glamorous coffee services I've seen for many a year. Will Hoggy step up to the plate? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Next up in the dealer's den is Mark Stevens. He's been joined by James. Well, you bought me an eye ring here. What's the history? Where did you get it from? Uh, my granddad gave it to me a few years ago. And to be honest, I don't really wear it. Because right. as you can see, it's a bit ostentatious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you bought it along here today. Do yeah. you know anything about it? Yeah, I um, understand it was made in Sri Lanka around the 1990 area. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes perfect sense. And I'll tell you the reason why. Sri Lanka is predominantly a country that produces a lot of sapphires. And if we take this out here, mm -hmm. and I get my eyeglass and have a look, these, apart from two which are pearls, are various coloured sapphires. So it ties in exactly what you're saying. Yeah. But what I think this is, I think this is high carat gold. I can't see a hallmark. There's no hallmark. But by me just putting down my hand, I know it's 18 carat. It's got a good weight to it. I mean, it, it's quite a, it's a well-made gents ring. Yeah. We'll put it back in the box there now. If we manage to have a deal, what are you going to do with the money? Uh, I'm actually going to put it towards my car insurance. <laughs> They're expensive nowadays, aren't they? Especially... Yeah. 22 not... years. Oh, old, right, so... yeah, under, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's going to cost you a bit of money for that. And have you got one of those big high-rated cars? That's it, you see. <laughs> that's, that's me. Right, OK. Shall we get some money up? Yeah. Let's talk on. turkey. Let's see what I've got. OK. Yeah. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 220, 240, 260, 280, 300 pounds. So it's high engine cars, you know. Yeah. <laughs> hot hatchbacks. Hot hatchbacks, hot you see. Uh, That's a little th bit more. Little bit more. Little bit more. Right, okay, look. 320, 340 pounds. Would you like David to come in at all and talk to you about it, give you a bit of advice? Can do, yes. You sure? Very you nice know, to hear two experts. Yeah. Right, yeah. Here he comes now. Well, the estimates vary, but basically the lower part is 380 going up to 440. But a lot of the dealers will look at the intrinsic value on the price of gold today as we speak. Yep. And that, including some allowance for those stones, is probably about 468. I'm going to say probably your best bet is to try and deal with Mark, see if you can get a bit more money off him. I mean, 340 is not a bad price, but if you can do a bit better, yeah. I think you're, you're close to it. OK. OK? Yeah. So you heard from David there. So I will put a bit more money on the table. Okay. I can see what we've got there. So we've got 340, 360. Until I do, I'll give you £380. Yeah. 
based on that, I think I'll um, accept your offer. You sure? Yeah. Yeah, well, as long as you make sure the money goes to the insurance, you don't go and have a good yeah. night out. How about that? <laughs> well, you never know. James, it's been a pleasure dealing with you. Thank you very much you indeed. Too. Thank you. It was a really good deal. I enjoyed it. And I uh, got the price that I was more or less looking for as well, which I'm pleased with, and that'll hopefully go towards me um, car insurance. Would that be a wheel deal then, James? Now, Hoggy's been served up an attractive Royal Worcester coffee set. It's been a while since the Duke and auctioneer Robert Stones have seen porcelain of such quality. Graham, what a nice item you've brought in today. Thank you very much. Well, what is it? You tell me. Um, it's Worcester, and uh, there isn't a crack or a mark or a chip on it, Michael. You're spot on. It is. It's the silver bases, the silver spoons, and Worcester porcelain. I mean, it just don't really get any better, does it? These dates are 1908, and they're made by a very good silversmith called William Coomin. So why are you selling it now, Graham? Well, I thought I've got five grandchildren, and they all need money for this, that and the other. My yeah. eldest grandson has just been picked for England at rugby, 19s oh. and under, and he wants a car, and it'll have to be a cheap car, so this yeah. might go towards it. Oh, what a great thing to do with it. Thank what a great you. thing to do with it. That is one of the most glamorous coffee services I've seen for many a year. I mean, these things obviously were very fashionable many years ago. That wouldn't go amiss in your Worcester collection. No, it's a really nice thing. It's the quality, I think, that's going to take it away. But, you know, they have gone down in price a lot, as okay. you say, not as fashionable. Yeah. OK, Independence have said three to four hundred quid. Yeah. You're saying what? Four hundred, four hundred, four hundred fifty. I don't think you're out of the way, Robert. I think that's a fair estimation of the quality and the standard of workmanship here. Mm. We think it's a quality item. Mm. We think it's worth its money. But what about Hoggy? Is he going to go in for this? Let's find out. I'll make you an offer. Thank you very much, Michael. No worries. And we won't mess around. We go 50, 100, 150, 200 pounds. I couldn't possibly take that, Michael. No. How about 250, though? I'm, I'm so sorry, Michael. Not really up there yet, is it? No, no, no. It's no money for Royal Worcester and Silver. I need to get in there and tell our seller, no way, Jose. Take your chances in the auction. I think we'll get David in and give us a bit of advice on this one, because I'm struggling. Hello, well, David. Hello. Absolutely superb. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful quality. Our independent value as an auctioneer, they are all within the same mind, 300 to 450. Yes. Now, on the day in the auction, it can fail because I have to tell you that this kind of merchandise is not in fashion. But because this is Worcester, you might just get a Worcester collector who thinks, hang on a minute, that could go well within my Worcester collection. Yes. <clears throat> so at 250, it's a decent offer, but I think it's worth a little bit more. Well, look, David, everybody's been so kind to me and helpful this morning. I'm going to be honest with you. In uh, 22 years ago, I paid in auction £500. 22 years ago. Money, well, David. you know, it doesn't surprise me because the marketplace was so buoyant. So I'm going to say, unless you get more money on the table, we have to run at auction to give it a chance mm. to see if there is another Worcester collector out there who might pay more money for this. David, thank you. That is such sound advice. I'm prepared to put more money down, Graham. 300, Graham. No, I'm sorry, Michael, that's very cheap. 320? No, sir. 340? I'm so sorry, no. <laughs> 360? Well, the answer's yeah. no, I'm sorry. I'm going to stick at 360, Graham. Well, thank you very much, but I won't be taking that. Sorry, Graham, but I wish you luck at the auction. Thank you very much, Michael. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. David will look after you. Thank you. It's been looked at, and I'm not very happy with the, uh, the offer that's been put on the table, so I've decided to take it to auction, and um, that's about it, and thank you very much. Serious determination from Graham. Will he get his £500 back? Over to the Duke. You sat down with Michael Hogburn and he said 360 quid. Now, 
I think on the day, you're still going to lose a little bit of money on this, but the reserve is 400 quid. I think we're going to get the 400 quid, maybe a bit more, but the commission will be the one thing that will take you down I a bit. I understand that, so, yeah. Well, let's just hope that there's two people on the net that will be after each other. Yeah. I think the most important thing is let's hope it's a, a Royal Worcester collector who really wants to own this. Yeah. yeah. OK, here we go now. It's Thank you very much. Up. Thank you. OK. Lot number 182 is this delightful Royal Worcester silver-mounted coffee set. £300 bid straight away at 300 310 is the now at £300. This is giveaway money at £300. £310 is the now. It's slow at the moment. Very slow. At 310 320 330 340 350 He's got bids on the book. We're at 360 We're at 370 380 390 400 410 At 400 and bid. With me at 410 420 on commission. Last chance. A wonderful thing for little money. Nobody on the internet. I can't believe that. It's at £420. It's going to be sold, the last chance. At £420, all part and done. £420. £420. I'm not going to ask you what you think about it, Graham, because I know you will be disappointed after buying something in 1987, which is fabulous. We do have some commission to take away. £344 yeah. after the deduction. Uh. <laughs> Very disappointed. I best go. not say any more, <laughs> otherwise we'll <laughs> we'll both be crying. Yeah. The real deal goes to you, Hoggy. Three hundred and sixty quid. Yeah, it would did actually, didn't it? Yeah. Next, a colourful collection is dazzling Janice. Hello, my name's Baz. Hi, Baz. What have you brought for me today? It's an old item garment worn by. Uh, I think it's a Freemason tradition thing. And, and how do you come to own all this regalia? Well, it, it's actually owned by my sister. She's had it salvaged from a landfill site, actually. It was being thrown away being on Being thrown yeah, away? it was being thrown away, oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. And she, I think she's had it about 20, 25 years. Yeah. So she's wow. pulled it out of the attic for me to fetch yeah. along for on her behalf. There's an incredible assortment yeah. of items here, and they're all in lovely condition yeah. to say that yeah. they've actually been inside the yeah. loft for 20 years. And this item here, it's absolutely fascinating. It might actually be gold, this. Um, I Joking. don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. But these were worn on watches. But it, it's really interesting. If you open everything out, it's got all these different items that are important to the Masons and, as, and are symbols of the Masons and their work. I will make you an offer, but... Um, I personally feel this would do much better at auction because I think the lodgers in Southport and West Lancashire could really be interested yeah, in this and I think this is a lovely item so I, I will make an offer. I've got 20... I'll go £40. I'd want a lot more for it considering that yeah. this might be gold now. It, it mean, might well be gold. So, um, we're, um, we're not sure at the moment. Yeah. It's one of them I'd always be kicking myself for you the would. Yeah, the I, I quite understand you know that. I mean? And I honestly I mean. think this is a fantastic yeah. set of regalia. And uh, here's David to give his opinion. Now, the problem is with this Masonic items. I mean, there are certainly people who collect Masonic yeah. items, yeah. but the initial estimate was 70 to 100 pounds. Yeah. Now, one of our, uh, you know, beady-eyed specialists said, hey, hang on a minute, Dave. Now, this yeah. little... A ball is nine carat gold. And I'm reliably told that those on their own can, and I say can, can bring 100 to 150 quid. Now, yes. you know, bear that yeah. in mind, can. Yes. I don't think 40 is enough. No. I think it probably needs to go to auction. Let it run in auction, let it find its level, yeah. and if it makes the 100 quid or a bit more, all well and good. And if it yeah. doesn't, don't be disappointed. Thank you. Okay, Baz, thank you've you heard David. What would you like to do? I'll take it to auction. Thanks. That's brilliant. I thank, really wish you well with it. Yeah. Really good luck. Yeah. I hope you do well, yeah. and I hope two collectors yeah. fight over it and you get a really good price for it. Thank you. I think it will find its true level there because you can get all the collectors bidding online and on the internet. Um, this particular item, if that turns out to be gold, it could be quite a valuable little lot. Over at the auction, the Duke has some news. This globe was thought to be nine carat gold. Yes. I have to tell you, since the dealer's day, the auctioneer has tested it and it's roll gold, it's gold plated, yes. which tends to bring down the value 
You sat down with Janice and she offered you 40 quid. Yeah. So after the information you received, you said, no, I don't want 40 quid. No. I want to get near the 100. Yeah. You've got a reserve of 100 quid on it. It's here in the sale room. OK, let's see what happens. Lovely lot, ladies and gentlemen. What let me say, Fred? Eighty pounds for it straight away at eighty pounds anywhere now. At eighty pounds, eighty pounds and bid at eighty pounds, eighty-five, eighty-five, ninety multiple bidding on the internet at ninety and five now. And for ninety-five, ninety-five. I heard. Is there a hundred? One hundred bid at one hundred. They like it. We're thinking it's going to be very difficult to sell, and they're in on the internet fighting it out. One hundred and ten bid. One hundred and ten. Do you want to go one hundred and twenty or is it one hundred and fifteen? 140, multiple bidding on the internet, 140 pounds, 150 fresh bidder. 150 in the room. Have we underrated this? 180, multiple bidding. 180 on the internet now. Oh, At 190, and it's going to be sold. At 190, last chance. 190 pounds. This commission and a bit of VAT to be taken off that, it's going to leave you with roughly about 155 quid. What's your first reaction? Very happy and pleased. Very happy and pleased. Yeah. Well, you've heard what Baz says. On the day, lots of people on the internet wanted this, and it came out with the real deal, £155. Well done, Baz. Still to come, more hoggy mania hits the dealer's den. For another fiver, I'd let you have a kiss. Got ya. That's me done. Even the Duke wants a piece of the action. <laughs> what is this aftershave? Hey. God, that's the coffee. Hey! <laughs> He's got a bit Get of a kick, Hoggy. Yeah. Plenty of deals going down here in Crewe. It's back over to Hoggy where he spied his next potential customer. Wendy, thanks for coming in today. You're welcome. Tell me what you bought. Um, I bought a telescope. And it's been in my family for about 30 years. Okay. Um, it was left as part of a, a house um, that was left to my father, basically, so yeah. I know very little about it. Shall I tell you a little bit about yes, it? Yes, please. The first thing you've got to look for on a telescope is you pull out the first one, and you turn it around, and you should find the maker's name on there. Yeah. Can you see that? Yes. J. Levi, 1892. Right. So that's the maker of this one. And then this is called a telescopic telescope. And there you go, in its full glory. Yeah. It's got its leather body here, which is what you carry it with. This bit comes off, obviously. And when you would have had one for that yes. end as well, which would have protected it a yes. bit better, really. And why are you selling it now? I don't know what to do with it, really. Yeah, and it, it stays in the cupboard, basically. Yeah, sad but true. Yeah. What are you going to do with the money? I'm going to treat my mum to lunch, maybe. Are you? Yeah. Does she well, like fish and chips? get a bit more. Because <laughs> no, fish and chips is a good lunch nowadays, you know? I was hoping a bit nicer lunch than that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make an offer, then. OK. So you think she likes Italian, Indian? She, she loves Italian, yes. Italian. In that case, 10, 20... £30. OK, she likes Italian with wine. With wine, 40 yes, lovely. <laughs> OK, England expects every man to do his duty, and that includes you, mate. 40 to 60 is the estimation. Fine. 40's down, nearly there. OK. Now, be a bit firm and try and put another tenner on, Hoggy, and oh. I'll get out of your way. David. It's a nice one, nice leather it's cover, lovely. Hoggy. I'll meet you halfway out of fibre. I'm getting out of the way now. I can't see much. £45. That leaves a £5 profit for me, I would say. For another fiver, I'd let you have a kiss. Got ya. That's me done. Brilliant. £50. Oh, I've got to give you the kiss. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I can't help it. It must be my new aftershave. What is this aftershave? <laughs> Uh, hey. God, that's the coffee. Hey! <laughs> He's got a bit of a kick, Hoggy. Oh, dear. £50, pounds. thank Excellent. you very much. Thank you very much. The deal's Cheers. been done. Thank you. Just been up to see Michael and he offered me £30. Pounds. Managed to push him up to £50. Pounds. Um, that included a kiss, so I'm really, really pleased about that. Blimey, there's something in the water in crew. Damien's next up with our Joe. He's brought in a mysterious oil painting. <laughs> How do you come to own it? I've just come back from Edinburgh with a girlfriend on holiday, went to her sister's, and I saw this sat on top of a cupboard. 
And I says, what's that? She says, I'm going to throw it out. It's rubbish. And I looked at it, I thought, it doesn't look rubbish, so I've just bought it on the off chance. Right. Might be worth something. Um, it's an oil on, uh, on board. I'm just going to tip it yeah, yeah. over so we can have a look at the back. It looks like an oak panel. There's a label here which is so faded out. I don't know if you've been able to make anything out from it, but... No. I certainly can't. It's um, two ladies and their clothing seems to be slightly... Revealing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Going south. Um, there's a character in the back here, can you see? Yeah, just With a, yeah. a mask. There doesn't um, seem to be signature anywhere. So there wasn't a frame with it or a no, mount? No, it's just as you see it now. Just as... And, and, and how long has she had it? Well, her husband's great granddad was a, a collector of bits and bobs and he, he said it came from him. It got passed down through the family and it's ended up with them, really. It would be nice for somebody to know exactly what, what that it is. was. Yeah. Right, well, we'll have a little rock and roll. There's £100. £200. £250. No, I think it's worth more than that. Here comes David. <laughs> Bit of a tricky one. It's on a rather interesting item. As soon as this came through the door, I thought, oh, I like the look of that. It may be 18th century. It could be early 19th, but it's on board. It's oil. The independent value is on the auctioneer. They're saying rather temptingly 500 to 800. So I think it's worth a gamble at auction, unless you've got a lot of dosh on the table. So I'm going to leave you with the fair maiden from Newcastle. And unless she puts 500 plus on the table, I'm going to say, let's gamble it. Let's investigate. Let's go to auction. Right. <laughs> I think it's worth you having yeah. the gamble with it. I think that's probably the best, and we'll see where it goes from well, there. Yeah. Good luck with it, and I wish you all the best. Thank you very but much. But thanks for bringing it in. Thank you for Thank your you. time. Thank you. It went very well. I got offered £250 by Joe. Uh, it's a bit speculative, the, the piece, so I thought I'd take it to auction and see where we go with it. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Back to the sale room. Now, on the dealer's day, Damien brought along an oil painting on a board. Now, he can't make it here today, and so I'm looking after his interests. Now, on the day, Damien sat down with Joe Brayshaw. Joe said, Why, hey, man, I'll give you 250 quid for it. He said, oh, no, I think it's worth more than that. I'm going to gamble and go to auction. They've set a reserve of £650. Our seller is determined. He said, no, I don't want to part with it unless I get 650 quid. Is he right? Well, let's find out. It's coming up now. Lovely looking picture here. Lovely thing. What's it worth you then? I'm bid £400 for it straight away at £400. 450, 450, 500, I'll take. At 500 is an hour. At £450, at 450, 500, I'll take. They're slowing down at 450. I thought it was about 500 quid's worth. The reserve is 650. Is it a bit optimistic? At £450, last chance at 415. Not sold, I'm afraid. Gavel has gone down at £450. Not enough on a rather ambitious £650 reserve. Interesting picture, but just over eggs with the estimation. That's the way it goes. Coming up, over on Mark's table, things are very superstitious. 1250 Unlucky for some, but not for me. 1300 Is the writing on the wall for our seller? It's been a great day in crew, and with time for one last okay. deal with Mark. Graham's hoping to cash in his gold and silver coin collection. How did you come by it? I used to be a long-distance lorry driver for a local company. When my break was due, I used to stop at little antique shops. One day I was in Newark on Trent, at a little antique shop, and old Tom owned it, having a cup of tea, and a guy walked in and said, would you buy this? And Tom said, well, I don't buy jewellery, and I don't buy gold. And I said, well, do you mind if I have a go at it? He said, yeah, so I bought it off him. And how long ago was that? 1982. 1982. 
Are you going to tell me what you paid for it? No. Oh, you always make it hard for me, don't of you? Of course. Well, I'm sure you well know all the coins are on the top here, which is the five, two, sovereign, half and quarter, are all made of 22 karat gold. Mm -hmm. And the coins on the bottom, the crown, the half crown, the, the, the ten pence and the shilling, they are all 925 standard silver. Right. Made by Balawick Jersey, not in the coin field, the most collectible of sets. What we're actually looking at here, as I'm sure you well know, is the bullion value. Correct. So, we better talk money now, haven't we? We better have. Right, shall I go in the pocket? Go on then. What colour's your favourite? Reds. I thought it might be. <laughs> right, let's go. OK. See what we got here. 50. 100. 150. 200. 250. 300. 350. 400. 450. 500. 550. 600. 650, 700, 50, 800, 50, 900, 950, 1,000 pounds. We're not stopping just yet. I can see that little look in your face. You thought I was going to stop, didn't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I've got, a, I've got a battle here. Right, let's see what else we got in here. Some more red ones? Yeah, please. OK. 50, 1,100, 1,150, 1,200. 1250 Unlucky for some, but not for me. 1300 You're impressed, aren't you? I am, but I'm impressed with a little bit more that you've got in your hand. This you took that out for a reason. I, do you know why I took this out? Because I'm looking at all I've got left in the world here. Right. <laughs> I'll put another one of those down. £1,350. Now, come on, you oh. know, you, looking at these, you're thinking, oh, I know how much they were. And they're worth a little bit more than that. Um, they are worth a little bit more, but yeah. do you begrudge me a small profit? I begrudge you a big profit. One more £50 note right. is 1400 pounds okay. but you've got to shake my hand. OK, Graham, I think David should come in now and uh, okay, give right. us his opinion. Here he comes now. Well, 1350 is on the table. Now, I've just heard from the sidelines, Marcus said, if I put another 50 quid down, will you shake my hand? So that is... £1,400. The estimation on this from the independent values in the auction was fourteen to £1,600. So I'm going to recommend scoop that money up and get off home. If I put the other 50 down on there, 1400 we got a deal, Graham? Yes, we have, yeah. You sure? Absolutely. Yeah, I love having a trade. Great, Graham. Thank you yeah, very mate. much indeed. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Graham. Lovely. Unfortunately, there's only one thing to do with these coins. And that's put them in the scrap pot. There's a profit, but not a great profit, but I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, the deal went fine, I think. Um, I ex what I expected when I came, and I paid £200 for them, so to get £1,400 back is not bad deal. Yeah. Mark's a happy boy, and Graham's £1,400 richer. Our dealers have been splashing the cash in crew and have offered up over £2,500 of their own money. But have they been able to turn any of this into profit? Not much luck for Janice today. She just couldn't keep her sellers away from that sale room. Really good luck. I hope you do well, and I hope two collectors fight over it and you get a really good price for it. Thank you. Just the one item for our Joe today. Listening to David, I think, yeah, we'll go for the deal, Joe. Yeah, I think that's the right thing. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thanks for bringing Ciao. it in. Ciao. She turned the cruet set around and ground out a small profit. A couple of items for Mr Stevens. Has he left much of a markup? Uh, my granddad gave it to me a few years ago, and to be honest, I don't really wear it. Because right. as you can see, it's a bit ostentatious. <laughs> yeah. The ring was sold on to a client for a reasonable return, and the coins avoided the melting pot as Mark sold them on to a collector. Finally, it's heartthrob Hoggy. Okay. Now's me kiss. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, hey! <laughs> got a bit of a kiss, <laughs> Not only was it kisses all round, it was profit ahoy for the telescope, and the Clarice Cliff netted him a nice little earner. I always knew that Michael, the diamond geezer, was funky, was modern, yeah. was trendy. I didn't know he was a sex symbol, did you? I'm a sex thimble, David. <laughs> Time for a lie down, yeah. Hoggy. It's been a really exciting day here in Cheshire. Lots of things have turned up. There's been lots of buying, lots of selling, lots of action. That's what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.